Welcome to Live with the Joneses, where faith comes first, family is our mission, and every day is an opportunity to be the light of the world. This is a show where we talk about homeschooling, parenting, family, marriage. Did I miss something? Family. Family. There you go. We talk a little bit about everything. We open up to you guys, and this week... Um, we're going to talk about values, the importance of values, and those values that we lost in society. So it's going to be a, a good one. So thank you for those that commented on Facebook. If you still haven't uh, so, uh, joined us on Facebook, go right now, subscribe, like us. We're also on YouTube. Um, so all the videos that we do here on Thursdays, we put them on YouTube. So subscribe. Today, as Joanna said, is episode number 19, and the title of our show is Values We've Lost and How to Get Them Back. And so we start each episode with a quote, and the quote this week is, the aim of education is the knowledge, not of facts, but of values. And that comes from William Ralph Ing. So when you think of education, we normally think of, you know, in school, in the classroom, and how we, we teach our kids certain subjects. We learn about science, and math, and history, and language, and all of these things. And it's very much based on subjects, on a specific thing. But there's so much more to life. There's so much more to living a productive life, a, a good life, right? And unfortunately, you might be great at math, or you might be... Uh, you know, have a great uh, love of history, but that doesn't make you a good person. You can still be a horrible person, right? So what we want to talk about today is values, because values are even much more important. And that's why Joanna and I have chosen to, to homeschool our kids, because we feel like we don't want to send our kids out to a school in order to, you know, trust someone else is going to instill those values in them. When that's our job, that's our responsibility to, to, to give them those values. So we're just talking about um, values and how that's a big part of why we, we decided to homeschool. Yeah, because I think, um, especially this time of age, um, the closer we got to like the 2000s, I think you, you got to see the difference in the way kids act. And it's so sad to see, you know... Sometimes you don't even know who's a parent or who's a kid. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, values is something that we have lost. And I think it's important that we remind us ourselves as adults, you know, how can we bring them back? So we're going to uh, ask you guys a question if you guys want to comment uh, below. And it says, what values do you think we've lost in our society? So we have, we're going to mention some of the ones we think... Um, that we have lost, but you guys are more than welcome to keep adding to our list. So we could also do some pointers on those too. So yeah, we're going to do kind of a two-parter thing. Uh, we're going to start with talking about some of those values that we have seen uh, disappearing in our society, values that we have uh, witnessed being lost. And then we're going to talk about some ways on how we can get those values back. And it's, it's, uh, it's a difficult battle. And so we're going to talk about some of the, the ways that we can overcome those challenges. Um, one of the ones, uh, we're going to get started here, one of the ones that we've uh, seen is this idea of respect. Uh, Joanna kind of was already alluding to that, right? That loss of respect, especially in, in the younger in the younger generation, right? Yes. Um, I think that's one of them that uh, we commented today on Facebook. Uh, you, asked them, you asked them, you know, uh, to name some of them, and one of them was respect. And that came up a lot. That came up a lot. So I think respect we have definitely lost it in so many ways you know um the way i'm gonna bring it up it's uh regarding family and just close friends and so forth um for me an example you know i'm a i'm the oldest of the whole family and uh, my grandpa's always letting me know that he he is proud of me because when he goes to, for example to mexico these kids have lost that that lack of respect you know towards the grandparents or towards the aunts and Again, like I mentioned, you don't even know who's a grown-up because they don't even respect them. I remember back in the day, you know, my parents would comment, you know, you had so much respect for your parents that you would be afraid to even, like, bring up a question and so forth. So I think uh, respect is something that we have lost, and we need to bring it back. You know, we need to teach our kids, you know, what it respect, what respect is all about. Um, so for me, it would be that, you know, um, we need to bring respect back towards our families, uh, 
in you know in our relationships because it's important it's important to teach our kids to respect their elders um one thing is you know lack of respect towards the elderly people these days um you know we went to disneyland this past uh week week ago like last two days ago and there was an older lady there and you know she had three grandkids i guess older kids and she kept telling the boys our boys to go in front of in front of the in front of her so she could so the boys could watch the show um and so i was just like touched by that because we don't know again you know for myself i was always taught to respect my elders and i was just very touched by that uh, that experience just right there you know um i didn't i didn't i didn't have i mean my grandma passed away very young so i didn't grow up with that that bond with the with having a grandma so i don't know how that really feels so i was just like oh my gosh like that was very very nice and i wish i could you know have that experience with my my grandma i do have a grandpa and like i mentioned he's always commenting how um he appreciates how much i respect him and when there's like adult conversations we're sitting down and i don't take you know i don't comment on what i think i sh they should do as adults you know um I even when you might feel like you have the right answer. Oh, yeah, and you want to say something, but I don't, you know, because I was taught that when there's adults talking, we need to shut it and don't really say anything, you know. And so I remember back in the day, my, my parents would say, you know, that they, they were afraid of their parents because the parents would, like, give them the look and stuff, you know. And these days, kids are not even afraid of that, you know. So we have definitely lost it. You got to put the fear of God in those kids. Okay, of you. No. Yeah, but I agree. I think respect is a big one, and I think it, it goes even beyond just respect of your elders, but respecting people in general. Mm -hmm. I think we've lost the idea that every human being is valuable, right? You know, we to treat people as, to, to, to reward them the dignity that they have as human beings. We see them, you know, we see ourselves as high and mighty, and everyone else is kind of just whatever. We don't, we don't give a thought to them and, and how they're doing. You know, we say, hi, how, how are you doing? And you say, oh, I'm good. And you just kind of go about your day. We don't really care about other people. We, you know, the, the entire world revolves around ourselves. And I think that's something that's really permeated all of our society right now. Is just everything is about me, me, me. Uh, it's a very selfish, self-centered uh, society that we live in right now. And it's, it's a challenge. And we're going to talk a little bit later about how we can overcome that. Mm -hmm. So respect is definitely one that we need to work on. And it starts very, you know, I think as parents we have the, not the right, but the, the, responsibility. the responsibility to start teaching our kids, you know, very young to teach them, you know, to respect their elders. Um, you know, I, I, I would like to bring another, another example. example. For example, we have our compadres that live very close to us here where we live and their, their grandchild is staying with them and he's like 17 or around there. But when he met Ricky, he was like, hey, sir, you know, and Ricky was like, man, like, I, I, it makes me feel old, you know, but he was very <laughs> surprised. People call me Mr. Jones Ricky. or Mr. Ricky and sir. And yeah. Like, and I so had never been referred like, to that way. So it, especially I mean, by a teenager, you know, so he was very surprised, surprised, you know, to, to hear that from that gentleman. So well, it's just, you know, again, because society has lost that respect of, you know, respect towards the, the elder older people than you you know and so that was that was neat to hear that from that from that you know that teenager so I was just like wow you know I'm like I want my voice to be like that you know so did you just say neat neat <laughs> that's neat that's a very nerdy word to use oh my now um, I'm a nerd <laughs> respect no but I think it's it's true like and even you see it on the, in the kids tv shows all the shows the kids shows even like Disney Channel Nickelodeon and even us like when we were growing up you would see, and you don't notice it as a kid, but you, as an adult now looking back and I, seeing the shows that are on TV now for kids, you see how the adults, especially the parents and especially the fathers, are made to look really dumb. stupid and dumb <laughs> and they don't know anything. And the kids always have the answer. The kids always are smarter than the parents. And it kind of instills in the kids this that, that attitude, that belief that they know what's right and our parents are just, you know... Just something there. They're just dumb, you know. They have we, to we have to deal and... with them, and yeah, they're responsible for taking care of us, but they don't know anything, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think um, the media is is powerful, and we can't blame it all on the media because we're the ones who let our kids watch it, right? So, yep. um, but I yeah, so respect. What, you know, maybe that's another talk that we could talk about. It's about you know, uh, oh, yeah, internet definitely. and media, all that media because that's definitely um, 
we were just talking about this the other day with my another comadre, a friend of mine, how much it, um, what's the word? It influences our kids, you oh, know, yes. and... Um, very powerful. Yeah, very powerful. So maybe we could talk about that in another episode. On a future episode. Yeah. So another one of the values is hard work. So I think that's just something that, you know, back in the day, it just, it came natural to people. Whereas our generation, to. like millennials and, and our generation, it's it's very much like, we want to get as much as we can with having to do the, the least amount of work. We don't want to have to work for the things that we have. We feel like we're entitled, like we deserve things. And so that whole idea of having to work hard, of personal responsibility, I think those are our values that are... We have lost. For, for the most part, lost on our generation especially. Yep. For example, uh, Alexa, can you get this information for me? <laughs> Alexa. Siri. Siri, can you do this for me? And people are just... We're getting lazier Lazy. every yes. every time, you know? And I think it's it sucks because it... It's not good for us as humans to be lazy. You know? Well, it has to do with technology because mm -hmm. technology has, you know, advanced so much that it can do so many things for us. But, but some of those things is like, do we really need to be able to have our phone tell us something? I know. You know she should cook like, for me. <laughs> Alexa, can you cook for me? But she doesn't. I bet you you could probably order food on Alexa. Well, you can order food, but she can't cook for me. Anyways. But yeah, I think that's, it's true. And, and it reminds me of that movie, WALL-E, the Disney movie, mm -hmm. where Aww. everyone is, is fat and they're floating around on these, you know, ships. like hovering, um, hovering board? well, inside okay. the spaceships, they're on like these hovering wheelchairs mm -hmm. that are taking them all around. And <clears throat> the, you know, if they get thirsty, a straw pops out and they just drink from the straw and they never move. They're just kind of like these blobs floating around. Mm -hmm. But it's again, it's like, you know, technology has got us to that, to that point. Yep. So that's, it, it reminds me of that movie, too, how, how we're very much um, not willing to work hard these days. Yep. Uh, the next one is modesty. Um, mm, modesty, what's that? Modesty. Um, you know, I think it's mostly for women. But it's something that we have lost, in, you know, especially these past years. Uh, I remember, you know, my mom was, like, very strict about the way, you know, I dressed um, for school and so forth. And... She will not allow me to wear shorts, short shorts, you know. And so uh, I remember back in the day, you know, women only wear dresses, you know. And then they started wearing pants. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with pants. I wear pants. But these days, it's like, we, we, you know, we went to Disneyland a couple, uh, couple of weeks ago with my sister. And everywhere you mm. look around, yes. there's like, it's like the trend right now. Oops, my hair. I call them coochie cutters. Uh, you could call them Daisy Dukes. I don't know, but they're basically they're basically like panties. You're wearing panties, and these are young girls, beautiful girls, and it's sad because all they're showing is just skin everywhere. And how can you not expect a guy or guys to not look at you? Even us as women, you're just like whoop, you know. Uh, but it's sad because where, what respect are they showing themselves as a woman? Right. You know, and it's sad because. We have lost that, you know, the modesty of 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 a woman, you know, and the the identity of a woman. And so I think it's important that we we bring it back, you know. I know there's uh, I love fashion, you know, and all these trends and stuff, but um, we don't have to be walking around naked, you know. We're not in the nude beach, you know, right. area and stuff. But I think modesty um, that's something that we need to bring. We'll probably do another episode yeah. on that, just specifically. Bring it up because it's important. Because you know, how are we? How are we showing the world that what we? What image are... are we giving exactly. of ourselves? You exactly. know, because yeah. for example, as a, as a guy, when I see girls or young ladies dressed in that way, the the immediate perception of your mind, it, you know, you can't even help it. You you judge that person based on on what, what you see. Yeah. So if this girl is dressing like that, showing off, you know, half of her butt cheeks. You're gonna assume that she's a. Uh, I don't want to use any bad words. No, you know? Yeah, but you for know, guys, I'm saying from a guy's perspective, you immediately lose your dignity as a person. You're not. You're no longer seen as as a person for who you are. You're seen as an object for pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm saying that as a guy, that that's how it works for us. It just that's the way our brains are wired. So that's why I think modesty is important. Yeah. So modesty. Another one, humility, which kind of goes in in league with with modesty. Just that that whole idea of you know it's not all about me. You know I can be I can be open to the needs of others and and, and things like that. So 
Um, humility is one that's definitely, I think, lost. Patience Ooh. is a big one because we want everything instant ah. gratification. And as we were just talking about with Alexa and Siri and, and drive throughs and microwaves, it's like you can get everything you want pretty Ubers. much as soon as you want it. You don't, we don't have to wait. Our generation has kind of grown up not having to wait. And so, if you have to wait two more minutes, you get it. You get mad, and you want to talk to the manager. Like when I'm in the drive-through, like I want my food fast, and it gets it, it's crazy to think about it. But like we're we're getting angry because our food is not ready within like sixty seconds, you know. And but that's the way that our generation has grown up. So it's it's another one of the challenges. I think we've lost that sense of patience of being able to wait. to wait for whatever it is. If it's yeah. To wait five minutes to get your food, you know, is that really a long time? You'll go to a restaurant and wait 15, 20, 30 minutes for a plate. So why in the drive-thru, we, we expect that we have to have our food in 60 seconds or else we get mad, right? Well, I think it depends a lot in the areas that you live. Like, we're, we're from L.A., so I think we're fast-paced people, you know, Definitely. community. So, again, it depends because uh, we're, we're always rushed, you know, rushed. So I think that's something that um, the world has, you know, lost patience. But also it depends the area that, 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 you, that you live. So the next one is honesty. Honesty, I think, is, is a big one because it's just that idea of if I, it, our word doesn't have much value anymore, I think. Whereas back in the day, mm. like you would make an agreement and shake someone's hand. Now you get shot. And that was like, uh, like you were signing a contract. And nowadays... You know, people are lying all the time, even oh. on the news and, you know, it's everywhere. You're like, you really don't know what's true and what's not from what you hear because people are, are so willing to, to bend the truth. Maybe not completely, maybe they won't consider it a lie, but they'll um, hide certain pieces of the truth or, or bend bend it, to, twist it, I guess is, yeah. the, is the word. And so it's, it's, it's a struggle with that as well. So honesty. So we're going to move on now. Those are some of the, the values that we think have been lost in in our society if you have ones that you that you think that we haven't mentioned please mention comments. them in the comments but now we're going to talk about how do we get back those values that we have lost and so we've got a couple of ways and we're interested to hear what you have so if you could think of, of any ways which we can we can bring back those lost values please let us know in the comments below um i think for me one of the ones would be to not point fingers a lot of times we we hear a lot of talk about this and complaining about how the media did this or fake news that or you know the the schools or the government and and in a way those those things are true but it's not completely the fault of of one of those things right um, I think we all we all are responsible in a way for where society goes right it's not like there's you know a small group of people who meets and they control how society and culture works right we are all part of society. So if we begin to live that way, then society follows that, right? So I think um, to not point fingers is a big one because it's easy to say, oh, well, it's, it's the, the fault of the media or, the, or Hollywood. It's their fault that the things are the way they are. Well, we can't really blame them for everything, you know? We're, if we're the ones consuming that media, if we're going to the movies and watching their movies and watching their TV shows, we can't complain and say it's their fault for doing it they're just doing what they know is going to sell, what they know that we're going to watch, right? Yep. So I think don't point fingers. Um, the next one will be leading by example, and that's a big one for me. I'm always, you know, letting people know that we have to be leading by example so others can see it, mm -hmm. and not to be afraid to stand out, you know. Um, there's, like they always say, you know, there's those people that are not going to like you and dislike you, and that's just reality. We're humans, you know. We tend to judge people and so forth. So I think... Um, Leading by example, and you will see the, you will see the in return, you know, by what you're doing, uh, you will see good, um, the fruits, the fruits of that, you know. So don't be afraid to speak out, you know. That's something. That's what we love doing, uh, you know, doing these videos because we actually want to share this information with you guys, and I hope you get to, you know, be challenged by doing, you know, by at least remembering this stuff because, again, sometimes we're so busy with work, with our household, with, you know, as parents that we forget family and the values and important things about, you know, being good people to to share it to the world and to, right. you know, share the, the love, how they say, you know, out there into the world. So definitely leading by example. And like we always say, if you're a parent, we parents have to be, you know, a good example to our kids. If you want right. your kids to be good readers, you 
you have to they have to see you be you know reading so again we have to be leading by example <laughs> excluding me because Ricky's the one that reads yes <laughs> I think when we're talking about that whole idea of leading by example it reminds me of what we say at the beginning of every show that every day is an opportunity to be the light of the world right so when Jesus says that we are the the light of the world the salt of the earth the idea of that is you by your example are shining in the world and other people are seeing you as a beacon they're drawn to you they see the way you're living and they want to follow suit, right? Yes. So that I think is is the big example that Jesus gives us in the gospel. Lead by example. Lead by example. And uh, a shout out to Ruben, to everybody that's watching watching us. Hello, Sister Yolanda. Yolanda. Thank you so much for the comments. Keep commenting. Integrity. That's one that we were gonna mention, but thank you for letting us know. Inter inter uh, blah, 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 blah. Integrity. 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 If you say fancy, I can say. It. And character. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank so you. another way in which we can um, get back some of those lost values is to be a parent to your children. I know that this sounds kind of um, self-explanatory, but, but I even think... if you don't, sorry, even even though you're not a parent, I you know I hear these kids at schools, you know, uh, I look up to my coach, you know, or or a right. parent, like you a know, role model, role model. To somebody, yeah. But I think even when it comes to like us, we're parents, right? We have to take seriously that role as parents. It's our job to raise our children. Our school, the school is not, it's not their responsibility to raise your kids. It's not the school's responsibility to instill virtues and values in, in your kids. That's your job. When you send them to school, the teachers are going to teach them about social studies and history and science and math. But values is something that they have to learn in the home with the family. Because you could teach them from a book. But it's not going to take root in their lives unless they see it in you as their parents. So I think that whole idea of just being a parent. You know, we're not supposed to be their friends. We're not supposed to just give them whatever they want. We are supposed to be parents. And, and that means something. So I think living that out. And even like Joanna said, if you're not a parent, is there other people that you can look up to? Um, that look up to you, right, as a role as a model. Parent. You know, how are you being that role model to those people, whether they're younger or older? You know, we've got people in our lives older than us but they look up hi, to hi, us right please. so i mean and, and there's people that are younger than us that we look up to so i mean mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be family it can be friends it can be you know people that you know from your community I like but i think that's that's a big one another one is go to church i think going to church not necessarily just going and sitting there in the pew right but when i say go to church i mean having faith right faith is a big uh factor like when it that. comes to instilling values right whether it's with christian values or just your own you know morality but to be able to instill values in, in yourself and in the life of your family going to church is, is a huge step forward in making that happen because a lot of what we're talking about now as far as those values that have been lost are things that are values that god has has given us if you look at things like the ten commandments and the beatitudes and the works of mercy god is continually challenging us to live a certain way a better way of life which is following those values that we're talking about so i think going to church being a person of faith centering your life around god is a big a big start yep speak up with loving words um that this is a big one you know people going back to the you know leading by example and do not be afraid of you know to stand up it's okay to stand up and speak out, but we have to do it with loving words. Just like Ricky mentioned, you know, Jesus mentioned, you know, we have to do everything with with love. Uh, again, we have different personalities. People get to tend, you know, to, to get hurt when you tell them the truth. So, and we have to learn to, to make sure that we don't hurt their feelings. So, speaking out with loving words. So, remember that. That's very important because you don't want to get in in trouble and you don't want to lose those relationships with those people so it's okay to speak up but you know doing it with loving words so that's definitely an important one uh that we definitely have to remember our, ourselves as well too another one is seek professional help or like reaching out to knowledgeable people so not necessarily seek help like go see a psychiatrist um so that's probably not the best way to word it i think what we're, we're talking about is Reaching out to people who are knowledgeable, people who are, um, you know, that are kind of like mentors or role models to you. So, for example, if you see someone who's living out the, the value that you want, whether it's humility or modesty or whatever, if you see that in somebody else in another family, 
spend time with those people. Surround yourself with people who are putting these values in practice, mm -hmm. right? Because it's going to rub off on you. The people that you surround yourself with have a very powerful influence on, on who you are, right? We talk about peer pressure, you know, we talk about not having your kids hang out with those bad influences, right? Well, it works for you as an adult too, right? Hang out with people positive. who share your values, people who are a positive influence, and that's going to help you to better oh, practice, yeah. put in practice those values that we're talking about. And so those are just some of the ways that we wanted to share today on how to get back some of those values that we've lost. Um, I wanted to share a, a little quote from um, the Catechism of the Catholic Church from paragraph 2207. It says, The family is the community in which from childhood one can learn moral values, begin to honor God, and make good use of freedom. Family life is an initiation into life in society. So I think, again, going back to the whole idea of everything we do here at uh, the Jones Life, when it comes to values, it has to start in the family, right? Mm -hmm. It's not something that you're going to learn out in, in, in school or, or with, you know, wherever you go. It starts in the home. If you're not making it a priority in the home, don't expect your kids to pick it up and, and put it in practice either. Yeah, and, and it's never too late. But if you're just starting, you know, with the family, just like us, I think it's something that you need to uh, keep behind, you know, in the back of your mind to definitely start working on those values. You know, for mm -hmm. example, you know, our kids are five and, and, and four, and today we went grocery shopping, and they didn't want to help me. They didn't want to help grandma or myself, you know, with the soda bottle carrying and, and, and carrying the stuff. And it's like, and I, for me, like, I get angry because I wasn't grow up like that. You know, you want to start teaching your kids to help out. And that's just something little right there. But uh, you want to start at a very young age with your kids, you know. And so mm -hmm. the more you, you push it, they're going to appreciate it later on in the life. Exactly. And I think um, this, I wanted to share one other thing. We, part of the reason why we decided to share this was because we see this, this loss of values in our society. But I also was listening to a talk by Dr. Martin Luther King this morning, and I'm going to put a link below in the show notes afterwards where you can watch that video. It's a, it's a powerful sermon from, from uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and he's talking about this exact same thing about how we've lost these certain values. And, and of course, as a, as a pastor, as a preacher, his, his main focus is that we've lost God, right? We've, we've pushed God out of society. And that's why our society has started to crumble. So I, I, I'm going to recommend that to you as, as homework. And then you, could, you can share with us what you think of it in the comments below. And we want to end with a question. So hopefully this, you guys have liked this video on values. And it has opened your mind and reminded you how important values are in society and in our family. And remember, whatever you do, you want to start it with your own family. You don't want to be changing other people's you know, lives because that's not the way it works. We always say, if you're going to do something, start with your own family. And then, again, you're leading by example. Right. So people are going to be seeing that change in your, in your own person or in your own family. So remember, don't push anyone to change because everybody's different. You know, we can't uh, push anyone to be just like you. Nobody's going to be just like you. So... Remember that, and we're going to finish with a question, and this is for you guys to think about it. I'm always saying at night when you're asleep, before you go to sleep, you know, talk to your spouse, talk to yourself, write down a journal, or just think about it, you know. Um, so thank you again for watching, and we'll leave you guys with this question. Thank you, Ruben. God bless you, too. Um, it says, what values do you seek to instill in your family, and how? So what values do you seek to instill in your family and how? Mm -hmm. Or again, if you're... Go ahead. I was just going to say, some of the ones, you know, as a, as a reminder, some of the ones we talked about today were respect, hard work, personal responsibility, modesty, humility, patience, honesty, integrity. Some of the ones other people mentioned were uh, character. Um, what else did we miss? I think that was it. So, um, those are just a couple of ideas, but if there's other values that, that you can think of that we didn't mention, please share in the comments below and let us know what values do you seek to instill in your family and how. That's going to be it for this week of Live with the Joneses. This is episode number 19. Woo so next week will be 20 episodes. Wow. Um, of course, you can always subscribe on Facebook, on YouTube. Please come and join us on YouTube. We've got a lot of videos over there. Or if you're a podcaster and you just want to listen, you can find us on iTunes or whatever your favorite podcasting platform. So we thank you for joining us this week. 
Yes, and for these past 12 weeks, we're going to be doing the 6 o'clock uh, time. Uh, and then we're going to change it back up to 8 o'clock, the original time. So uh, if you guys don't see us live, you guys are more than welcome to come back. This video is going to be available within like 5 minutes. So you guys can watch the whole thing again. Share it if you thought it was good information. If you don't, just comment below. Don't comment. Or tag somebody both in, yes. in the comments and, and let them know to watch it. And keep us in your prayers and keep Mexico in your prayers and everyone in the world because we definitely need them. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.